So what they did is they used a dummy device that has a control with desirable units. So whatever units you want to be displayed, insert it into the chain and goes first, and it can be disabled if it's not needed. And then you map the dummy and useful controls to the macro. I was on the Ableton Live forum recently and I found this one post called Post Your Most Obscure Ableton Live Knowledge. And this post was from 13 years ago. And ever since then, people have been posting some tips that they wish that they knew sooner or things that they thought that other people would find useful. And so I decided to go through this whole thread. There's like 262 posts and pull out some of my favorite tips that I learned from going through this whole thread. This is the first post, it's called the Rack Hierarchy View. Click on the little rack overview and receive a menu which allows you to quickly jump to any instrument or effect within the rack. So of course we got this like old screenshot from Ableton Live, whatever the version this is. So let's say you have a large audio effect rack, you have a lot of plugins in this rack. There's not too many in this rack, but you can just go to this section and right click and then you have this menu that pops up and then you can just click on one of the options and it'll jump to whatever plugin you click on. So this one says key mapping is case sensitive. So if you've ever, ever key mapped anything, then you go up to this key button, you press key, and then you can key map certain parameters. So let's say I wanna key map this on and off switch for this MIDI track. So let's say I hit the S button. So now you have a little S that pops up, but if you hit shift and S to, let's say I want a solo, so I can hit solo, I can hit shift and S, and now you see a bigger S pop up. So when you think about hitting those two keys, obviously you're hitting two different keys, you're hitting shift and S together, but as it displays on the key map, it's a capital S versus a small S. This one says in the piano roll editor when inputting notes with the mouse by double clicking, keep your mouse button held down on the second click. Now, if you drag your mouse up and down, you can alter the velocity of the note. So here's some random mini notes. And usually when you want to change the velocity, you would hover over a note and hit command and then drag up and down. But I guess apparently if you double click, oops, so if, if I double click and hold on a double click, then I have the velocity selected, I can just drag up and down. So I'm just dragging the velocity up and down on the second click as I create those notes. So this one says clicking the start or end labels in the MIDI editor's notes panel, scrolls the MIDI editor there, clicking the length label in the loop section zooms the loop into view. So here's my MIDI, just for some random notes. Let's hit the start. I think it's talking about this start and end. So start, actually let's zoom this in to not the start. So let's say I'm over here and click the start. So it puts you, your view at the start and then you hit the end, takes you to the end of this loop, I guess. Yes, so that's the end, start, end. And let's just zoom this in, let's hit uh, length. It should zoom this out. So yeah, that's cool. Just like a cool shortcut to kind of get everything into view. So if I'm like incredibly zoomed in, I wouldn't need to zoom out and just hit this length button or the just click on the title there. Okay, so I'm gonna go through this A1. I thought this one was pretty useful. So create a new MIDI clip and click anywhere in it to set a playhead. Make sure the monitor button is on so you can hear your notes. Hold down a few notes on your keyboard and then press the right arrow key. You just drew a note or a chord the size of your grid. This is re really new to me. I had no idea about this. So here's just a, a blank MIDI. Let's go ahead and just play a chord. And I'm gonna hold these notes down. And so what is the length of my grid? Let's just set it to like 1 16th. So then I'm just gonna hit the right arrow key. And now I just put those notes down. So this is cool, like if I'm just testing out some notes. So if I'm just like playing notes on my keyboard, I'm just playing the notes and I'm just like hitting the right arrow key on my keyboard. So this is actually really useful. I never really knew about that. In a MIDI clips, the velocity editor hold command to draw a straight line. This adjusts the velocity of all the selected MIDI notes. So I've got this MIDI, it's just like a snare pattern, just playing the snare straight. So if I go into this velocity menu and to get this, you hit this little arrow to open this up. So this is the velocity of, of, of all the notes. So I'm gonna hold down command on my keyboard and then this, this dotted or what do you, whatever you call this line pops up and this is going to change the velocity. So I can go like this, and now all the velocity is going from up from louder to quieter. So I can create like a snare roll. So I could drag this up like that. And this is going to create like a snare roll pattern. Oops. Like where the snare roll is getting louder. And just one note, like if you're using, I have this in a sampler, I believe. So this is a sampler. So just make sure that you have your velocity and your volume 
uh, amount adjusted to kind of, so if I do this at 100%, It's going to be really quiet, but I think when at like default, it was at 0%. So it doesn't affect the velocity at all. So just make sure you adjust this if you want the volume to be assigned to the velocity. And what's also cool is I could go to the filter. So I could have this velocity uh, tied to the filter as well, or the filter tied to the velocity. So now this, if I'm creating like a snare riser effect, now I've got it like filtered when it's quieter and then uh, the filter releasing as it gets louder. So if, if I go back to this velocity editor and I hit command and see, I can drag this up and down, but if I hold down shift, now it's just going to be a straight line. So I can just fix all of the notes now like that. In arrangement view, hold alt and click on the button to expand the track. All tracks, which are closed will open. If you do it on open track, all others, which are open will close too. So I'm going to hold down Alt on my Mac and I'm going to highlight. Actually, I don't need to highlight. So if I just have one track, let's see if let's see, I've got all these open. So if I just hold down Alt, click it, they're all going to open and close. And also if I resize, so if I resize this one track, if I hold down Alt, it oops, if I hold down Alt, it will resize all of the tracks as well. So I could go like this, close this and then hold Alt. And now all the tracks are the same size. In the arranger, and I guess I mean the like arrangement view. So select a time span, then double click the time ruler. Live will zoom in on the selected time span. So I think it's talking about the they're talking about the top up here. So if I just like highlight this time and click up here, it'll zoom in. And if I change the zoom again, double click, it'll zoom in. Let's zoom in even more. And I'll zoom out. So if I'm zoomed all the way in, I can double click up here and it will zoom out to my selected range. If I'm zoomed out all the way and, and then I double click, it'll zoom in. So that's a that's a useful like arrangement tool to, uh, for like locating whatever range you have selected. So let's just like maybe select something like this and then I wanna zoom in, just kind of can quickly zoom in instead of having to like drag this up and down. Um, maybe that's a shortcut, maybe, maybe that will be helpful. In zone editors like the sample zone editor or the racks zone editor, press a note or range of notes on your MIDI keyboard, then double click a zone. It is set to the note range you've pressed on the keyboard. So let's get into a zone editor. So this is the zone editor. This is sampler. So open up the zone. So we've got the key, which zone the key is assigned to. And then you can drag this up and down to say like, you only want this sound to be played when you play these lower keys. So what they're saying is if I just play a key, so I'm see it turned red. So I'm going to hold down some notes on my keyboard and then click. And then the range will only be located to that one track. Now, if I hold down multiple notes, let's hold down these and I'll just click on the range again. Now the range changes. So if you have uh, your MIDI keyboard set up where you have uh, different instruments associated to different zones like that, then you can uh, quickly do it like that. We can select multiple points in the graphical window of EQ8. Click, hold, and draw a frame over the desired points, then move them horizontal or vertical with your cursor keys. All right, so I've got an EQ8. Let's see, let's say I've got a band there, and then let's say I got a band like there. Let's make this into uh, a bell, oops, type of curve. So let's say I've got that there. If I just click my mouse and drag this box over those two points, now if I drag them, it'll drag and move them at the same time. So that's something useful uh, if you want to keep the relationship of these two points the same. To record automation without deleting Eclipse content, unarm the track you want to record the automation into and then hit the record button. So I want to use this EQ8 I've just shown you as an example. So I'm going to open up this show hide info view and see if I hover over this button, this is the automation arm. So I'm going to arm the automation. And so let's see, I want to record these two points moving the automation for these. So let's just hit A so I can see what's going on. I'll hit record. Gonna move both of these points. So now we've got the automation recorded and I didn't have this um, armed. If I had it armed, see it would record complete new MIDI over top of that MIDI. So I don't wanna do that. Now if I just like see the automation I made, so now I can see these two points moving like that. So that's a really cool way to add like complicated uh, uh, automation moves by just hitting record and then selecting both of those nodes. 
or multiple nodes if you have more and then just like playing around with their position. And if I hit this drop down, then you can see all of the parameters that I just automated. I don't know how obscure this actually is, but if you want to make multiple MIDI notes the same length, select them, drag the left edge of the longest note all the way to the right. Let go of the mouse button, then drag the left edge to the size you want. All right, so they said drag the left edge of the longest note all the way to the right, but I think they meant to drag the right edge all the way to the left. So I'm gonna select all of these notes, click on the longest notes. These are the longest notes on the right edge, drag it to the left. Now they're all the same size. Now I let go of my mouse button. And now if I drag this all the way out, now they're all gonna be the same length. This one is a bit more complex than the other ones, but I found that this was very useful. So when multiple controls are, are mapped to rack macros, they are displayed as zero to 127 values and plugin parameters always map like that. So see, they have this attack mapped to this macro knob, but it says 127 instead of just like 100%. So what they did is they use a dummy device that has a control with desirable units. So whatever units you want to be displayed, insert it into the chain and goes first, and it can be disabled if it's not needed. And then you map the dummy and useful controls to the macro. Then both the dummy device and useful devices are grouped with dummy racks. So let me just show you what all this means. So I've got this audio effect rack and let's say I want to use the Valhalla Vintage Verb and I have this mix knob that I want to automate, assign it to a macro knob in my audio effect rack. So we see it goes from zero to 100 and I have the little configure. I click configure, clicked on the mix to get the mix to pop up. So I can automate this mix. And if I right click, I can map it to macro one but see, I clicked right click map to macro one and it says 127. So if I start automating this automation, then see it's 127. So I want to get to show 100% and not 127. So what they're saying is to use a dummy device. So in this example, I'm just gonna use the compressor and I'm gonna turn it off because I'm not gonna be using it. That's what they mean by dummy device is that it's just there. It's not really doing anything to the sound. And you can see the dry and wet knob is zero to 100%. So what I can do is I can right click and map it to this mix knob or the macro knob number one. It goes back to 127 again, which is not what we want. So what you do then is you just group this and now you have the compressor in a group and then you also group the vintage verb. And now this goes to 100% instead of 127. And then if I go into my Ableton session, you can see now the top is 100%. It has the values that I want. So that's a pretty interesting uh, workaround to get around that uh, 127 value uh, option. And this is useful if you're doing like a lot of automation. If you have any other Ableton tips that you would like to share, please go ahead and comment them down below. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a like and also please subscribe to my channel if you are not yet subscribed. And if you'd like to check out any of my senior preset packs, I'll put links down below for those as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.